Hey y'all, it's Hope here at Crafty Hope and welcome. I am working on days, I think this is eight and nine of my 100 day project, which is hashtag not precious project. In this video, I'm going to be working on the cover and the closure for a little board book I'm altering. Um, I will direct you to the previous video that explains that a little bit more. But let's see, the piece I have here is a molded resin piece. The mold is from Finnebear. I will link it below. And the, I'll also link the resin I use, which is some quick cure resin. So I painted it first with black gesso as a, like, to give it some tooth to have something to paint on top of and I like the black because I wanted to paint this gold and gold I have found that a black is a much better base for metallics than um than a white gesso so um once I got that black dry I then painted it with some modern masters gold I think it's Olympic gold paint okay I'm also, in addition to working on the cover, like I said, working on my closure. And y'all, I was like up half the night thinking about how, what I wanted to do for the closure for this. Because realizing when I added the papers to this board book that it wasn't going to stay closed, um, I was like, I have to have a closure. Now that the book's done, I'm realizing I probably didn't, but it's okay. I decided I was going to use these two washers um, to add some recycled sari silk to them to tie it closed. So I have taken these washers and I am marking where I want to drill some holes. So I took that out to my husband's workshop and used the drill press. Um, it's I, I call it my drill press because it's my favorite heavy tool out there besides the laser cutter. So I drilled those holes that I marked and now I'm using, y'all, that's some kind of fingernail buffer thing. I'm not a nail person, as you can tell, so I don't know. I only buy these for uh, filing and sanding purposes. <laughs> um, I did bring in my fine uh, sanding block there as well. I'm doing everything I can not to sand off the paper that I took so much time to glue down. So once that is sanded down a little... I'm going to bring my washers in. Now, I knew I wanted to stitch these washers on. I will admit that on the second one, which I'm not going to show you because it's the same process for both of them. On the second one, I did use a little E6000 to stick it down first. So, I decided that I wanted some marks on there and a few more things before I... I took the big leap of sewing on these washers, so I used my chunky pencil to do some scribbles on there. And then I have these rub-ons. They are from Tina Walker's Etsy shop. I believe it's Frog Dog Studio. I could be wrong. I will try to link Tina below. She had a huge sale before she moved, and I picked at those and some other rub-ons and some other fun stuff up from her. So I decided to add a little bit because the napkin lace that I put on the edge has a little bit of rust on it. I kind of wanted more of a rusty feel on the cover of this. So I thought these rub-ons were a great way to add that rusty. And y'all, it really is because when I looked at the pictures of this cover, I totally was like, oh, I don't remember adding any rusty paper to the cover. <laughs> and I didn't. It's these rub-ons. So I, uh, yeah, they, they were a really good purchase. <laughs> So I'm going to just pick a couple of spots that I feel like just need to be elevated, maybe don't have something on them, and all of that, and I will rub it down. Now, if you're curious about my 100-day project, basically, y'all, I am taking items that are in my stash and have been too precious to use and making myself just get over that and use these things. I'm sure you have items in your stash that are like that you feel like I don't want to ruin that. I don't want to mess it up. It's so nice as it is. Um and that are just lingering and I have a massive stash. So I am trying for these 100 days to to use those items that are in my stash, like these rusty washers or some of these very nice papers or even those rub-ons that I just got from Tina. All of them are so precious that I have not been using them. So I'm trying to use these things. And oh, and that mold. Yes, that mold is, it's been, I don't know how long ago I molded that, that keyhole forever forever. So 
All right, here is me going to stitch this on. And I started in the front because I'm going to tie it in the front. I decided I wanna add a whole lot of bulk to the inside of the page because I didn't know what I was gonna do on that inside page. So I started on the front so I can tie this down. And like I said, on the back cover, the one I put down that you're not gonna see, I did use a little bit of glue to tack that down so I wasn't having to hold the washer the whole time. And yeah, so, and that means I can always cut this one off if I wanted the other one. It's gonna be a little bit harder to do that. And I am, like I said, my, I, I knew I wanted to just kind of overlap this. I think there are four stitches on it. I made sure that my last stitch was gonna come out um, on the inside, I think, of that washer across from my first stitch so that I could just easily tie over the top of that rusty washer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, yeah, work with that tail that's, uh, that's there and not the whole thing with the needle and everything. I could have cut it first, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to cut this down to the size that I want anyway. So let me, let me just go ahead. And you see, I've got, a, I've got thread in my hands and I'm messing with other parts of, of it. And I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> that's me. I'm always like, but what else can I be doing? All right, so I am, I cut one side, I'm fraying it, and then I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do here, how long I want to cut it. So I cut it, and I'm going to use the needle there to kind of pull that thread apart and fray it. I do love some frayed thread. All right, so I have this keyhole, and y'all, I could totally have put some words or something in there behind it, but I to me, it was really more about using the the actual keyhole um, than putting something behind it. Okay, like I said, I did attach that other that back piece the same way, um, so I didn't. I'm not going to make y'all sit through that. So I decided this needed some kind of softening, some kind of fiber element. So I've got some rust dyed, I believe it's rust dyed, cheesecloth there that I'm cutting down. And do you see how when I'm cutting it, I'm kind of pulling away? I wanted this to be kind of raggedy and weird. And so, yeah, I cut it kind of making sure it was partially ripping, but with my scissors. And I'm going to put that behind the keyhole there. And like I said, this gives it a softening, gives it a more natural element. And I kind of love it. Um, I think there I had some of that, that rust rub on it kind of coming off. So I like use that file to, to get it off a little bit more. Now you can see I've got my Fabri-Tac here and y'all in any of these videos where I'm using the Fabri-Tac because mine has gotten so low, there's a lot of holding it upside down, waiting for it to get to the nozzle and squeezing. I put that little bit of Fabri-Tac in there. I did decide to position this more toward the top of it. I, and I know I made that intentionally decision because I, I wanted some of what I had on the bottom, some of those papers, some of the marks, some of that to be visible. And I felt like if I put that keyhole right there in the middle, it, uh, it took some of those beautiful papers I had put down away. So some of those precious, precious papers, not <laughs> took some of that away. So I've, yeah. And then I needed, I felt like I needed a little bit more of that rusty feel up in that upper corner. So I rubbed it there and some of it peeled off. So I'm going to stick it elsewhere or try to stick it elsewhere on the book. Didn't work. And again, I will sand any of that little excess that's hanging over. And I think I'm going to use my E6000 here to, to glue down that. Uh, that resin piece I just felt like I needed a heavier duty glue because that's a heavier substrate substrate material it's a heavier material hey let's stick with the easy words <laughs> so I know y'all I'm a dork and I'm gonna put that down and let it dry to yeah I'm gonna clip it because this is staying kind of popping open it was going to be at an angle and I didn't want it to like slowly slide off as it dried so I'm just using some clothespins to clip it let it dry and then I am coming in I felt like it needed a little something more so I've got some buttons and some more E6000 
and these buttons two of them have the original like thread and fabric in them from out of the button jar and I kind of left it again that added that softer element to it and it it includes a bit of the history of the button whatever that button had originally been on is still on there so it carries with it the history of that button so I, I kind of love that. So I am going to glue those down. I picked out a blue one that kind of goes with the thread I put on there and then just a brown and a white one to kind of go with some of the elements that are already on that cover. Okay, so I really like that and I'm not going to weigh those or clip those or anything. They, they are sticking pretty good. I did decide that I needed a little bit of like almost distressing of that keyhole. So what I'm going to bring in is a um, Americana craft paint in Ooh, sea breeze, I believe. And I'm going to dry brush on it just a tiny bit to give give like a patina to that gold so that like it's a, a a brass getting a patina on it that's you know just in a little bit I'm trying not to go overboard with it and really this is something I would have preferred to have done before I glued it down because I was trying to be really careful not to get that that blue green paint onto my cheesecloth and all of that and you can see here I'm bringing the gold paint back in over the top of some of that patina um Oh, and this was while I was struggling with my battery dying, so that did die there as I finished that up. All right, so here is my recycled Sari Silk, and it's in, again, a dark blue, and that's what I chose. I think that's part of the reason. I think I knew that's what I was going to use, and that's why I used that blue thread that I used to tie on the washer. I am going to use this DMC... Uh, floss in a gold um, and y'all I will warn you if you get the stuff it frays so easy I love it I love it it's got such a great sparkle to it but it frays super easy so I've got it on a real my really big needle and I've tied a knot in it and I am going to insert just thread one end of that sorry silk into my washer fold it up and then I'm going to stitch. I'm starting on the inside there to try to hide that knot and everything. It If it pokes out, it's really okay because it's that gold and it's pretty and I like it. So <laughs> it's fine. Um, and I'm going to do a couple of stitches here to, um, actually I think I do X's even. And I can't remember. I did quite a few. I wanted to make sure it was nice and secure but also still decorative. And like I said, if I hadn't realized all that I was adding to this later I may not have added my this closure here it's still pretty neat um, you'll see a picture at the end unfortunately most of the pictures I'm going to share with you that this process have been taken after the entire book was completed because y'all I was having so much fun with it I didn't even think about the fact that I needed pictures for these videos so disregard what you see that I haven't done yet in this um, but of course you can head over to Instagram Instagram and see all of it if you want to skip ahead and see what all of this looks like if you haven't seen it already over there. All right, so I'm going to add, and I'm trying to remember if I do, I don't think I do both sides of this for you on camera because I do this exact same thing also on the back cover. So I'm trying to, you know, save y'all a little time, save me a little time, all of that. Um, Anyway, and I will link to some of the materials I've mentioned below. I am an Amazon associate, so if you do buy something, um, I will get a very small percentage of that, but there's no extra charge for you. So there's my little disclaimer. Oh, there's where my, yeah, oh, y'all, I'm so mad. My needle slipped off there, and I was like, you know what, let's just cut it all down and, um, yeah, and I'm going to split that thread and tie my knot. Now there, I've got the back cover on, and I'm going to show y'all me tying it. And I think that maybe it looks, and here's me trying to get it nice and closed. It's, ne it's never going to do that again. <laughs> I've packed quite a bit into this beautiful little journal. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to see more of what I have going on. Um, and 
stay tuned. I, I have I have lots more coming for this assemblage project. So, oh, I did add some of those scribbles to the back as well, just to make sure they're there. All right, I've got a few pictures for you. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see y'all very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.